All right, guys, we're going to jump right into the games. Here's some Switch games that are coming out that have physical releases. And some of them you can already download on the eShop. Uh, first game, Rolling Gunner. Uh, this was a Dojin PC release. The, the development circle behind this one is a circle, I believe, called Mebius. Uh, could be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, there is a physical PC version, and you can also download it on, I believe, Steam. And there's probably free downloads uh, somewhere out there on the Internet. If I can search them out and find them if you guys want it. This is an excellent shooter, though. Uh, this game kind of plays like, in a way, you're going to kind of argue me on this, but it kind of plays like Zero Gunner 2, and the fact that you have like a swing mechanic, although you're not moving your ship, you are moving your pod, and you're locking it into place. Um, another example of that, and again, it's not really a shoot 'em up but was released on the Dreamcast and kind of has the same mechanics, would be Gun Spike or Cannon Spike. has the same kind of mechanic where you're kind of rolling around, although it's not your person or your ship. It is the pod attached to your ship, and it's kind of the opposite of that mechanic, if that makes any sense, guys. Um, this is coming out physically on the Switch. Um, I'm not sure of the release date, but it is listed on the Play Asia website. It's the only place I've seen it, and it's not up for pre-order yet, but you can download it on the eShop, and it is really good. It's not that expensive. Um, guys, check it out, Rolling Gunner. You won't be disappointed. Up next, we have Rival Megagun, and you might say to yourself, what the hell is Rival Megagun? Well, Rival Megagun is a Twinkle Star Sprites clone. Yes, a Twinkle Star Sprites clone, which is funny because I've been finding physical versions of Twinkle Star Sprites for PS2, uh, Dreamcast, and the PS2 version is where it's like a 3D remade Hudson Selections kind of thing they did on the Dreamcast and PS2, but that's for a whole other video. This game plays pretty well. It doesn't play as good as the original Twinkle Star Sprites, but as you can see, it's for Switch and PS4. I don't know if that applies to all the games on this list. I just know about this one because I have the PS4 version downloaded on my system. Um, if you want a physical version of Twinkle Star Sprites or Rival Mega Gun, it's gonna cost you $100. Reason being, and for both systems, you have to buy it in a three pack with this, the company First Press Games. Go on their website, you'll see it. You have to buy the first three games they released in a pack. It's three games. The other two games aren't shooters, but I don't know if they're good or not. I should just buy this and flip the others or sell them on eBay to try to recoup most of the cost. But if you do want a physical version of Rival Megagun on the PS4 or the Nintendo Switch, go to First Press Games. All the information is there. I'm not sure if it's an order or a pre-order, but it's going to cost you right around $100. That kind of sucks, but again, if you want the game bad enough, that's your options. So this one, guys, this one's really cool. This is the Shmup Collection on the Nintendo Switch. And this is uh, the Dojin Circle that produced these games, I believe, is Astroport. And uh, they've done two games that I have on my PC, but it's uh, Cetasius, Wolf Flame, and Arm 7. Again, two of those games I have played. They are really good. Well, pretty good, anyway. Definitely worth having on the Nintendo Switch. And I get so excited when I see these Dojin games get ported to the Switch. You know, one of the first games I can recall this happening to... Um, you know, since I've been really into shooters would probably be Astabreed. You know, the game I played on my PC and when I saw limited run games or I actually saw it up on the eShop for uh, PS4, I was like blown away. We're seeing more and more of that. This is a perfect example of that. And I guess this would be either a Japanese or a PAL exclusive. If you do want this game, I have mine pre-ordered already. It's 31 euros or 29 euros. It's like $41 after taxes and shipping and everything. Go to the Pixel Heart website. It's easy to find. You'll see the pre-order for the Shmup Collection. I highly recommend you guys get this. This is going to be one of those things that you're going to see in an MJR video like years from now. And it's like, man, if I had just watched John's video and bought that game for 29 years, I'd have been at it. So I highly recommend you guys seek this out, even though it's not out yet. It's just something, if you're into shooters, I think you're going to want. So I know I haven't done like a pickups video on YouTube in quite some time. I mean, if you follow my Instagram, you probably know what I have. But these are some of the most recent pickups that, you know, you guys might find interesting. You know, I don't know. But um, I've played a little bit of all these games, some of them more than others. But anyway, Gundam Extreme Versus. Uh, this is kind of a virtual on arena style kind of mech game. Um, if you guys are familiar with Gundam, um, you guys probably know more about this than me. Um, but this was a, a Japanese ex exclusive <laughs> game on the ps3 um you know i've played this for a couple hours it, it, it's okay um it's worth the price i mean this thing was under ten dollars so it's a uh, you know it's got its manual and, and everything but gundam extreme versus if you like virtual on style of games you might uh you might really love this so keep your eye out for it um okay here's a ds game that i found recently um and a buddy of mine did like a pickups video or he did a ds video like all the games in his collection this is a game i believe that he had but uh fantasy star zero um 
I actually sunk a couple hours into this game the other day. Um, really, really stunning uh, graphics for the DS, you know, at the time. Now, you know, when you play this game, if you're, you know, let's say somebody in their 20s or 30s, this game might look really dated to you. Um, but to somebody like me, you know, I, I'm like, man, this really pushes the power of the DS. So, um, you can, uh, you can do multiplayer, local multiplayer. Uh, I don't know if the online is still active with this, but, you know, maybe I'll test it out. But anyway, Fantasy Star Zero and not, not a super expensive DS game, you know, for what it is. This stuff's really hard to find, at least for me. Um, okay, here is a Switch game that I haven't really played a whole lot of, but I looked for this for like two weeks and couldn't find it anywhere. Enter the Gungeon. Um, I heard stories of like GameStop, Best Buy selling this thing cheap. I ended up finding it at a Best Buy. It was like 30 bucks. So, um, you know, not super expensive for a Switch game, but it does come with like a little like uh, <laughs> like construction, like construction paper pack where you build stuff. You know, I'm not going to open that up, but, you know, pretty cool for a $30 uh, Switch game, right? Anyway, enter the Gungeon. Kind of a, kind of a plain case. But nice to have some screenshots on there. Um, now, when you buy games, you know, at least for me, I like to look at the back of the case and look at the, the screenshots on the game, right? And that's what I did with this game, and that's how I got this game. And this is Arc Rise Fantasia on the Nintendo Wii. Um, I'm a big lover of, like, JRPGs, right? You know, love RPGs, uh, turn-based um turn-based, timing-based, action RPGs, you know, I'm really into that stuff, um, you know, super heavy combo-based, uh, you know, action RPGs, I really like those, um, but I saw this, and this is an RPG that I, you know, I buy all the RPGs I can find on, you know, any system, you know, just to try them out, you know, I don't just collect, you know, shooters, I also collect RPGs, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it, honestly, but um, here's the screenshots that I saw on the back of this thing, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah, it's hard to focus, but anyway, it had some pretty compelling uh, screenshots on the back. And, uh, you know, I did sink a couple hours into this and, you know, pretty fun from uh, what I saw of it, you know. And a uh, cool thing about this is it says you can use a GameCube controller, so I might try a GameCube controller, you know, out with this game. But, yeah, Arc, Arc Rise Fantasia, this is like a, this was 30 bucks, so I don't know what this goes for online or anything. That's what I had to pay for. I'll pay $30 for an RPG, but, um, yeah, Arc Rise Fantasia. All right. And last but not least, well, this one might be least because I haven't haven't played this game at all. all I've, I watched some reviews on YouTube. You know, they could be biased reviews. I have no idea. Let me know in the comments down below how great this game is because it was cheap. Didn't cost a lot. But anyway, Dawn of Mana. Um, never played this game before. I did hear that there was a PS2 Mana game. Uh, you know, I never had it, never played it. I really didn't know a whole lot about it. Um, but I did find it, and it was um, it's like 15 bucks. So, and it's complete with its manual. So it's got uh, everything, what appears to be the original case. Um, so a mana game, which you know traditionally these things are uh, action RPGs, you know overhead action RPGs. Um, this one doesn't appear to be that. It appears to be a 3D rendered uh, version of a mana game. So interesting. Um, I, I've, I've heard bad things about this game. Now, again, you know, if you've played it, let me know in the comments down below. You know, it'd be great if this was like the fucking coming of Christ and, you know, I just got it. That'd be awesome. That means I'll play it as soon as I get home. But, you know, let me know. Dawn of Mana. Is this a, is this a stinker? <laughs> let me know in the comments. But, uh, yeah, it's just some random stuff that I got, I'd say, over the past two weeks. I'm going to touch base with everybody in the community and just say, like, wow, over the past few days, so much has happened. Um, I've been wanting to do a video. You know, I've been so busy with work. Uh, I've been wanting to make a YouTube video, and it's just so much has happened so fast that I, I couldn't cover and encompass, you know, everything. Um, you know, if you guys don't know, if you don't follow Radical Rick, um, you know, he pretty much shut his own channel down. Um, from what I understand, the guy got some copyright strikes. I guess it, it's really spooked him, which is kind of surprising. I didn't think he was going to, you know, fold up that fast, but he pretty much shut his channel down. Um, he is releasing bits and pieces of stuff here or there, but, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is a shame. It is a real shame to hear a voice like his silenced. Um, 
God, that is a, it's a scary thing if you think about it. Um, you know, that guy really opened my eyes to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of things and not, and not just in the video game YouTube community. I'm talking about in different areas of life. You know, his, uh, his thinking, his, his philosophy is, uh, you know, pretty uh, revolutionary and um, pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a breath of fresh air for, for me and for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, you know, Rick, you know. Sucks that, uh, you know, you can't be around right now, buddy, but I get it. You know, if you got to do other stuff with your life, you know, it's totally cool. Um, you know, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Um, but, you know, so much has changed, you know, and it's not just like the, the COPPA thing. You know, that, that has really nothing to, to, to do with, you know, what's going on. Um, you know, what, what's going on is we're just seeing, you know, a shift, uh, you know, in many things. We're seeing a shift in the morals and ethics um, of YouTube. You know, we're seeing a shift in the, in the, the cash flow and uh, revenue flow of content creators. Um, you know, the kinds of things that are applicable to the videos that they upload to YouTube, you know, whether it be enabling comments, um, you know, running ads, etc. Um, some people that do do this for a living are going to be affected by that and, you know, probably going to have to go out and find real jobs. And, you know, I do get it. I do know that's probably going to suck for a lot of people. I get it. But, you know, it's probably just going to make you a stronger person anytime I ever had to go through a change like that. If you're a content creator and you're listening to this and, you know, if all this change has, like, affected you to the point where you're financially unstable, just, you know, hold your head up high, man, and just keep moving forward. You know, you're not going to get anything if you don't keep moving forward. Um, so I've, I've been there, man. I've been, I've, I've had jobs pulled out, the rug pulled out from underneath of me and, you know, I just kept moving forward and I just landed where I landed and, uh, you know, everything ended up working out for me. Um, but you know, I don't know many of you guys are like me. You're just hardworking Americans or wherever you are in the world, you know, you guys work hard and, you know, if you want to buy a video game, you buy it with your hard earned money. Right. So anyway, it does suck to see certain voices silenced, but there's many people. One of the great things about this, you know, they call it the anti eBagger community. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't really consider that a derogatory thing, but, you know, some people do. You know, that community has served many purposes for me. And I'm not just talking about Rick and, you know, the stuff that I picked up, you know, watching his content. I'm talking about the other content creators in this community, you know, gaining a, a deep appreciation for the comment section in my videos. Um, you know, meeting people and meeting people with different, you know, passions for different video games. And it's just, it's very, um, it's very diverse. And in that diversity is where a lot of the strength lies because we all are passionate about the same core things. And that, that's, that's what brings this community together really strongly, at least for me. And, um, you know, I see why, you know, people like Rick, um, and not just Rick, you know, many, many people in this community, we all, you know, one thing we have in common, we all have a very deep appreciation for that comment section. It, it's, it, and it's so deep that it, I don't look at sub count. I don't look at views. I don't look at any of that. Um, I look for that and I'm not even looking for number of contents. I'm just looking for not content comments, not even looking for comments, number of comments. I'm just looking for that one comment, you know, that one comment or that good comment, you know, it could be a comment that's rough and abrasive, but it gives me, you know, some very, very critical, you know, positive feedback, you know, and it, it could, like I said, it could be in an abrasive way, but I can internalize that and use that to my advantage. You know, if you're wise, you know, you, you can, <laughs> you can do stuff like that. Us older folks that are in our forties, you know, we can, uh, we can look at things for what they really are the majority of the time, not saying everybody and make the necessary changes needed. You know what I mean? But yeah, that comment section, you know, I've, I've met so many cool people on YouTube that, uh, you know, not just in my live streams, but, you know, just to comment on my videos, uh, people on social media, um, you know, guys, I'm really, really, really into shooters. And that's how this whole YouTube thing started for me. Um, you know, honestly, I think my first video was actually some of my first videos weren't even video game videos. Okay. Some of my first videos, like my first video, I think, no, maybe not my first, but anyway, my most popular video, the thing that got, it's got over half a million views, guys. It's crazy. And it's weird. It only has a few comments. I never disabled comments for that video or anything, but it's a hooker video where I find this like hooker in my boss's car. And it's not even a really cool video. She just flicks us off and like walks out of the car. And, you know, I know she was in there, you know, getting high and she was all passed out and it's, it's kind of fucked up. I mean, honestly, but, um, you know, for whatever reason, that thing got a half a million views. Um, and, you know, I, I, I did get a few subs, you know, that way. But um, 
I don't really care about that because it's not people that really interact with my video game videos, my hobby videos. So it's really it's it's pointless. It doesn't. It's funny that it's on my channel though. So you you guys could check that out. Um, it's it's somewhere on my channel. You'll see it. Um, but you know, other videos that I I'm you know stuff that I'm really passionate about. Um, it's funny that that hooker video there's only like a few comments on that but I'll put a video game video out with like 50 views and get 10 comments you know what I mean so that it's just kind of funny how that kind of thing works out but um, you know guys there's a lot of cool people in the community that I've been meeting um, you know Lawrence is he's putting out some some great content right now um, you know a lot of people are dragging uh, Darius Truxton's name through the rug um, but I feel like that dude's a solid dude. Yeah, so there's Darius Trucks. And I'm telling you guys channels right now that you can you can go subscribe to all these channels and have plenty of content to watch. If you're like me and you listen to YouTube content at work, uh, you'll have plenty of stuff to listen to during the day, okay? So there's a couple, right? Lawrence, right? Um, God, what's Lawrence's channel's name? I don't know. You're just going to have to go to Darius Truxton's channel, and uh, you'll see him in the – he'll be in the comments. You'll see him, Lawrence. Um Darius Truxton, and he's got a couple of channels. He's got a Woody Woodbagger Show channel. He uploads content. So that's the backup channel. If Darius's channel gets taken down, that's where we're all going to go over to the Woody Woodbagger Show, and that's going to be the new the new hangout spot. So that's the way he's got that set up. Um, you have Immoral, and uh, he's a man that goes by many names, but he puts out a you know critical satire comment uh, on Hancock and many others. And speaking of Hancock, you know, are the changes that he's recently made to his channel are they enough? Are they enough to, for him to avoid a lot of the criticism? Well, I'm going to say this. I believe that they are because, you know, with Rick not not being out there like he is, um, you know, Hancock's always going to have people that he considers to be his haters. They're always going to be around. Certain people are always going to, you know, bark and, you know, sticks and stones and that kind of thing. So um, I think as long as he keeps all those affiliate links away and, and, and the, the blatant, obvious, um, you know, money grabs and things like this, as long as he stays away from the majority of that and just does his little Patreon and, you know, whatever he, he, he started with and became accustomed to, he should be fine. Um, so, you know, Hancock, if you're, if you're listening to this, buddy, you know, I do want to applaud the changes that you have made based on the critical satire videos that were made about you. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to see that you're finally, uh, you know, making some changes to your channel. So that, that's cool. And I'll, I'll continue to support and watch your content as long as you keep doing that. I, you know, um, not a, not a big fan of the Patreon, but you know, not for me to, not for me to control. So, so yeah, you know, that's one of the great things that's, that came out of this community was we started to see, um, you know, the content creators that, you know, they had these, these angry viewers, you know, because of the, you know, because of the criticism, the constructive criticism, we saw changes happening to some of their channels. And then you know, it's funny, you hear people like uh, Metal Jesus start saying things in his videos, like, here's a game, here's a game that I, uh, I bought with my own money. <laughs> it's so funny, like... Why? What are you talking about? Every time I buy anything, I buy it with my own money. Like you, it's so funny that you're in that that deep of denial, or you know, I'm, t I'm trying to think of how to word that. You're you're just in in so deep with uh, became so accustomed to that lifestyle of just receiving that you would have to make a bold claim that you bought something with your own money. It just uh, it reminds me of like something. And my kid's 13 years old, right? It reminds me of something my kid would have said when he was like six or seven years old. I bought this with my own money. <laughs> anyway, just kind of funny. Those are the types of changes you saw because of this community. Um, and those are some of the funnier changes, you know, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, more channels to watch. Another channel, right? Another channel of a man that's uh, he's made many changes to his channel and he's, he's moving forward with content. And I think he's doing it in the right way as to prevent his channel from getting shut down. And that is Smash JT. Um, you know, I got friends out there that think he's full of shit. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, man. I think the dude's solid, in my opinion. So definitely check him out. You know, I feel like Smash JT, he's got a solid channel. There's really many other channels out there that have great content. People that I know, you know, uh, Dat Game Collector, uh, Gaming Off the Grid. Um, Rebel Gaming Club. There's so many other great content creators, guys, out there. I know some of you guys are thinking, like, damn, there's a huge chunk of my viewing, you know, time just got wiped out during the day. What am I going to watch? I know some of you guys are thinking that. Um, so those are just some of the channels that I watch and some of the channels I think you guys might enjoy. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Till next time, peace out. Thank you.